as you are all aware, there's much pandemonium in the world because of this coronavirus. And what I want to do is just address what's going on from a biblical standpoint or how we as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ should respond, how we should respond to all that is going in the world. Now, in Luke chapter, excuse me, I said 22, Luke chapter 21, my apologies. In Luke 21, Jesus told us ahead of time that stuff like this would happen. And so we want to look at the words of Jesus. Now, in verse 25, Luke 21, 25, and Jesus said this, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. And so these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he's talking about is in the end times. And Jesus over and over again would, would talk about what was going to happen. And that's that's why we can believe the uh, authority of the Bible because much of the Bible is prophecy and everything that the Bible said would happen in a prophecy has already happened or will happen. And so here Jesus uh, is saying, this is what's going to happen in the end days. And in another place, he says, I, I, I told you these things over and over again. So he's telling us um, what would happen. And he said this, of course, there'd be signs in the heavens, but also on earth, because most of us live there, right? We, we are on the earth. And, but notice what it said on the earth, that there, on the earth there would be distress of nations with perplexity. I'm reading out of the King James Bible. And with the sea roaring, you know, that's talking about tsunamis and, and weather and stuff like that, and we've seen that. But I want to draw your attention to distress and perplexity. And if you have put on the TV, uh, listened to the radio online, or just gone to Walmart, <laughs> you have seen distress and perplexity. And it says this, that um, what would be the result of this distress and perplexity? Next verse, it says, men's hearts failing for fear Looking after the things which are coming on the earth, for the power of heaven shall be shaken. So it said because of distress and perplexity that men's hearts would be filled with fear. And how many know that's big right now in the world? People are afraid. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we were in the airport and uh, one of our flights was only a third full, another one a half full. And uh, we, we, we flew southwest and said they were down 8%. Uh, of their travel and um, we were we were ahead of guy and he was about to argue with the stewardesses because there was no anti-sanitation wipes to wipe everything down and and you, you just know everywhere the, the fear you know going to the vendor the the fear in people's hearts well Jesus said that would happen but what is this all leading up to well Jesus tells us verse 27 and then we shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and great glory. So what Jesus is saying, you know, what, what's happening, you know, in, in the heavens, the distress and perplexity and, and with weather things, this is just all little things that you'll see, that you'll know that the end is near, that the coming of the Lord is nigh. And so uh, we ought to be encouraged. So what, what are we to do in times of distress and perplexity? Should we be afraid? Should we hide in a cave? Well, Jesus tells us plainly when we see distress, when, when men are afraid. Verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And so Jesus is telling us when, when we see distress, perplexity, when things are going on like this in the world, we ought not be hiding in a cave. Our hearts ought not to be 
filled with fear and wondering what's going to go on in the world and looking at everything that is happening around us. Jesus tells us our attention should not be on these things. Our attention should be on Him. Our attention should be on, hey, Jesus is coming. And now don't assist. He said to look up. You need, we use that phrase in the world, don't we? You, you need to look up. What is that? When people are down, discouraged, we say, come on, look up. What is that? To be encouraged, to be excited. And so we ought not to be frightened. We ought not to be discouraged. We ought not to be given ourselves to fear, but rather obey the words of Lord Jesus Christ that we ought to be encouraged. We ought to be glad. And we say, man, we're just, we're just one day closer to, to going home to be with Jesus. You know, I like what the book of Job said. You know, and all the Bible is true. The book of Job says, at destruction and famine, or lack of toilet paper and stuff in, in Walmart shelves and tops and all that. What, what did it say? At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. That, that sounds like encouragement. That sounds like, man, you're not moved by what's going on. And so Jesus is telling us what our attitude should be. We should not let the fears and the pressures and the dismay that everyone that doesn't know Jesus, of course, they, they have, the Bible calls people that don't know Jesus without hope in the world. You know, if I didn't have Jesus, I'd just be afraid as everyone else. You know, I'd be afraid of dying, I'd be afraid of every disease, I'd be afraid for my life, I'd be wondering what's going on, because, you know, without Jesus, there's a whole lot to fear out there. And so there, there ought to be a difference between us, and that's what Jesus is saying. When, when everyone is looking around saying, oh my God, what, oh my God, what am I going to do? What about this? What about that? No more toilet paper, and, and you know, what about that, uh, why everyone's... We, we have an old farm saying. Now, you farmers don't understand this. They're running like their chicken with their head cut off. Yes. Now, if you've never beheaded a chicken <laughs> and seen that, you don't know what we're talking about. Now, how many farmers have ever seen that? Yes. It'll change your life. <laughs> I'm not recommending you go out this afternoon and try that. But that, that's what's happening in the world. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. But I understand, we, we don't belittle that because they don't have what we have. And so in these times, we really need to let our light shine. And let us see that the hope that's in us. You know, we, we don't belittle them. We don't say, what's wrong with you? But, but they ought to be able to see, see us that we're smiling, we're encouraged, we're not afraid, we're not panicking, we're not... You know, you know, waiting home until, you know, in, in, with our heads dismayed that we ought to be a, a light in your world. The Bible says, let your light so shine among men that they may, may, may see God in your life. And so, Jesus tells us not to be dismayed. And so, until, until this coming, we are to be encouraged and not be discouraged. We ought to be a shining light in the world and uh, we're going to look at some instructions that the Bible gives us in times like this. And so I want you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 41. So we are going to look up. And so next time someone, what, what, what are you doing? And all this, I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm encouraged. I'm strengthened. You know, really, can, can, I, can, I, can I be honest with y'all you know how I've been teaching faith confession encouragement for for 30 years now 30 years this is what it's for this is what it's for you know Jesus tells this parable about two kind of folk they that built their their, their house on the rock and they that built their house on the sand. And said so they that built their house on the rock, when the winds came, the storm came and beat against the house, that, that house stood because it was built on a rock or built on the word. But the same storm 
came and beat on the house that was built on the sand and it said this that the house was destroyed and great was the fall of it and so the problem wasn't the test the problem is what what they built their lives on and so this is why we've been teaching it from Sunday to Sunday for years and years. When, when the storm, the storms are real. We don't belittle the storms. There is, a, there is a real virus out there. People have died from it. But when you built, built it on the word and, and the understanding of faith, I mean, the devil can huff and puff and ain't going to blow your house down. But man, if you go panicking and you're afraid, then there's no difference between you and, and everyone that doesn't know Jesus. Man, you, you, you got to start building your life on the word. Amen? Praise the Lord. So we look up, not down. We trust him and we're not afraid. And so I say a 41. We got, we got some instructions from headquarters. We got our marching orders. Jesus said, when, when you see perplexity, distress, look up. Be encouraged. Smile real big. But God also said some things in Isaiah 41.10. I love this. God says, fear thou not. Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not unless... There's a coronavirus going on. And uh, you can't go to work and, you know, you know, all this stuff and CNN and all them. Then it's all right to get afraid because sometimes I get afraid myself, God says. Is that what it says? <laughs> no, of course not. Fear thou not. Brothers, do you realize that's a command? That is not subject to to interpretation not subject to conditions you know thou shall not kill thou shall not lie thou shall not take the name Lord in vain you, you, you do realize there's no wiggle room well I, I can yeah I can take the name Lord in vain if I stub my toe it's all right right no it's talking about when you're tempted to say something you shouldn't it it, it, it you know like lying oh it, you know, generally it's, it's, it's not okay to lie, but, you know, if you're really in a pinch and someone pressures you, it's okay to lie? Absolutely not. What about killing? Well, yeah, generally I don't mind, I don't kill people, but man, if I get really mad, you know, my temper gets the best of me, you know, it slips out once in a while. No! These are absolutes. God is God of absolutes. And so when God says, fear thou not, that is a commandment. We are commanded not to be afraid. And not only are we commanded not to be afraid, he tells us why we shouldn't be afraid. Fear thou not. Why? I am with thee. Over and over again, God commands us people, do not be afraid. And when we follow Jesus, the thing that got Jesus kind of irked with the disciples is what? When they got afraid. Remember they were in that storm and they were fearful for their lives? The storm was real. They were panicking and they were, they were all worked up. They were distressed and perplexed. I wonder, we read that somewhere, didn't we? And you now they woke Jesus up and say, Jesus, don't you care? Look what's going on in the world. There's a bad storm. We're, we're going to die. And Jesus woke up and says, I understand. I truly understand. Man, yeah, uh, you, you know, you're, you're afraid. It's understandable. Let's just take some deep breaths. And just, gee. now what do you say? Why are you afraid? Why? It's a commandment. See, what is fear? Fear is simply forgetting about Father. Fear is, is forgetting about God. Fear is forgetting that He's with us. 
for us and in us. That's why Jesus said when perplexity and distress comes upon nations, look up. I, I, I'm going to, a revelation just came from heaven. This virus does not scare God. And God didn't leave your life just because this virus came on the scene. You got an angel said, man, we're, we're going to be quarantined in heaven. We, we can't touch that stuff. <laughs> no. No. I am. God. I am with you. And so it's so important. Jesus said to look up. It is so important in this time to watch what you're looking at. We have this beautiful example, Jesus, uh, Peter walking on water. Again, there's a storm. The storm was real. And it says that Jesus was woo, walking on the water. And the disciples were perplexed, distressed. They were being rocked by the wind and the storm. And Peter had enough of living like that. And he saw Jesus mastered storm. And, and, and Peter said, Jesus, I want to do that. I want to walk on water like you. Jesus said, come. Come, Peter. And what happened? He got a boat and he began to walk on the water. Notice the, the waves and the wind were still there. The storm was real, but he walked on top of it. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he mastered the storm. But as soon as he began to look around at the waves and the wind and everything and the impossibilities, the natural outcome of things, he got afraid. And when he got afraid, he what? Began to sink. And so it is so important in these times that we keep our focus on the Lord. We keep our focus on the word and we keep fear out because what happens when we are afraid the book of Job said that which I greatly feared has come upon me see faith and fear are two attracting forces faith brings the power of God as long as Peter was in faith and kept his eyes on Jesus and not on the storm that faith brought the power of God and he was able to walk on water but as soon as he began to look at everything going around about him, all the perplexity, all the distress, that breeded fear in him. And that fear caused him to sink. And so our greatest job is to keep fear out. Our job is to keep focused on the Lord, on the Word, what the Word says and keep a great attitude, and we look up. God commands us, fear not. He says, I'm with you. I like the Amplified Bible. It says this, fear not. And he goes on and says, there is nothing to fear. See, when, when you judge everything by the word and through the eyes of God, that says, God's got your back. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not freely give us all things? And so God has not changed. God is not, you know, wondering what's going on. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we must be mindful of that during these times. And guess what? Since this outbreak, 1 John 4, 4 has not changed. Was first John 4 4, you are God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so I'm telling you, if you're listening to everyone talk and you're looking at all the empty aisles at Walmart and you're you're listening to news reports and so forth, I mean that's that's going to breed fear into you. It's, when, when, when Peter got to looking at everything going around him, he, he, he wasn't in denial. It was a real storm. But when he focused on that, he sunk. But when he kept his eyes on the master, 
He was able to master the storm. And so our focus needs to be right. Now it's all right, and I want to be it's all right to be informed what's going on. We ought to be informed, but we ought not to be so focused on it that we forget about God. Our attention and our focus should be on God. We, we receive information, but we have a higher truth, what God's word says. So let, let's read this on. Uh, Isaiah 41.10, fear thou not, I am with thee. Now notice what he says, be not dismayed. Why? I am your God. And so not only does he command us not to fear, God commands us, commands us, no wiggle room like lying and killing and stealing. Do not be dismayed. And so if God tells us not to be dismayed, it's important that we know what dismayed means. Now, I looked this word up in the Hebrew. It's very interesting. The word dismayed literally means to look at something with approval or acceptance. You know, this, and, you know, we really don't use that word in English, but, uh, uh, but the original language says is to look at something and accept that as the truth. When Peter was walking on the water, he, he kept his eyes on the word, kept his eyes, and he was able to master the But when he looked at the waves, felt the wind, and calculated in his fisherman brain, I shouldn't be doing this, he accepted that as the reality. He accepted that as the ultimate truth, and that caused him to sink. And so here God says, do not do that. Do not be dismayed. Do not be looking around you and accepting that as the ultimate reality. It's true. It's real. But that is not the ultimate truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. God's word is truth. Yeah. Again, it's not denying what's out there. It's out there. But we're, we're accepting a higher truth. That God's word is final authority. Now get this, and I like this. Other translations, I put this in my Bible. Because this is a command to us, brothers and sisters. Be not dismayed. We could put in, instead of dismayed, do not be alarmed. Another translation, do not be concerned. Oh, what is going on in the world? Oh, you know, you hear people's conversations. The buns are hard. The mouth speaks. Oh, what's going on? Their heart is filled with these things. Really, the Bible, the Bible says, Philippians 4, 4 and 6, rejoice in the Lord always. Oh, except that there's a virus going around. No, always. Be careful, be troubled, be anxious, be worried for nothing except the virus. No, for nothing. Well, aren't you concerned? No, not really. I'm under commandment. Not really. I mean, that sounds so foreign. But I am commanded not to be concerned. Not wondering what's going to go on. My focus ought to be on him. Oh, aren't you concerned? No, talk to Father about that. Talk to the great... Talk to, to God about that. You know, it, when God gets concerned, then I'll, I'll get concerned. Yeah. Well, you live in the dream world. God wants you to live you there. You, this, this is light and easy. This time ought to be light and easy for you if you think right. Oh, get this. Another translation says, do not be upset. Well, I don't know, anybody, but people are going crazy, and they didn't put the carts back, and everyone can't. Take a chill pill. God's not upset. <sighs> Greater one's still in you. God's still on the throne. Do not be upset. Another translation, do not be worried. Well, what, what, what about, what about, we don't, oh, I mean, what, what about, you know, if all of a sudden now we, we, we can't get this and get that. Take no thought for your life, Jesus said. Can, can you see what we've been teaching on for years? You finally get to 
put it into practice. <laughs> Finally, find out how your house is built on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh this, this is my favorite one. Do not be agitated. Yes. Going to Walmart, you can be agitated. My goodness, look at the cart. So, ah, the pan, you know. Be careful for nothing. Even though people are crazy and, and hoarding up like the zombies are ready to come out. Ah. Praise the Lord. Uh, we got to get going. Do not be shocked. Do not be distressed. No, do not lose your courage. See, Jesus said, this stuff will come. But look up. Look up. Put the word in. Be careful for nothing. Rejoice in the Lord always. You are the light of the world. This is a time to shine in the midst of darkness. Not, not to get bad with the world. This, this is what we've been teaching you all these years. We get to put it in practice. And God goes on. He could just command, so don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, left it there. But he says, I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. I'll uphold you in the right hand of my righteousness. Now, this is a great promise concerning this virus. Behold, all that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed, be confounded, and shall be as nothing, and they that strive against thee shall perish. You ought to say this, this virus comes to nothing, comes to naught. You shall seek them and not find them. How many now, even now in China, it's starting to diminish. We'll just continue to release our faith. Even them that contend with thee and war against thee shall be as nothing, a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, will hold your right hand. You know, during this time, y'all just go like this down the Walmart, go near the pills. And you'll see me doing sometimes in Holy Ghost services when I don't know what to do. I put my hand out like this. What is that? Father's holding my right hand. I'm with you. I'm your God. I'll hold your right hand. I'll take care of you. Don't fret. All your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties, roll it on him. Why? He cares for you affectionately, he cares for you watchfully. He's, he's holding your hand. And I like the amplify. There's nothing to fear. Father's here. The greater one's here. Amen. Well, it, it's so bad. Your focus is wrong. And that, that's why we have this book. Even if the zombies break out, and all of a sudden, the world, the world doesn't come back to normal. God is forever the same. There, there's examples. God takes care of his kids. That's where the miraculous happens, where ravens bring the food. Um, even when God delivered Israel out, of, uh, Israel out of Egypt, you know, everything bad that happened to the Egyptians didn't happen to Israelites. When it was dark in Egypt, it was light in the homes of, of, of God's people. Yeah, you know, we're divinely protected. You know? Now, excuse this if you saw the matrix. We ought to be like this. Yeah. But too many of us are like this. No. This is why we've been teaching you faith. Yeah. At destruction and famine, you shall laugh. Now, again, we, we are not dismissing, you know, uh, what's going on. It's a real virus, a real concern, and our government is doing everything, you know, they, they can to nip and bud, rightfully so. But our response is to look up. Our response is to not to be afraid. Now, turn with me to Psalm 91. I want to encourage everyone here. Everyone watching in the world is to get this psalm in them. Inoculate yourself with this psalm. Keep this psalm before your eyes. Declare the psalm over your bodies, over your loved ones, over our nation. Praise the Lord. Because God watches his word. 
Psalm 91. I'm going to read in the King James first of all. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, and my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings you shall trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Again, thou shalt not be afraid. For the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence, which is disease, that walk in the darkness, or destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Father's holding your hand. The day Father gets the virus is the day I'll get the virus. Yeah. You will not come by me. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even most high thy habitation. No evil shall befall thee. No plague, disease shall come near your dwelling or your house. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear their, you up in their hands, lest you dash a foot against stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, adder, young lion, dragon, shall you trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I'll set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me, and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the, this psalm, I encourage everyone, you know, I, I, just about every night I just meditate and confess it over my life. But not just in times like this. This ought to be in you at all times. Especially, Jesus said when you see things, these things start to come past. So it means that, you know, there might be some other things up ahead, but we're not afraid. Because Father's with us. But we need to get the word on the inside of us. And this psalm talks about distresses and perils that are going on all around God's people and talks about the security and the protection there is in God so study meditate confess this and so in our last remaining time together let's just look at some of these things to encourage us let's take the first three verses to start with he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress you know someone ought to write a song like that my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from noise and pestilence. And so this is King James. And sometimes reading King James, we can lose the, the real uh, context of it because of the pretty language. But pretty much it's talking about the secret place. Uh, another way you can translate is the safe place. There's a safe place in the Almighty. And it talks about being in the shadow. And really, there are just three simple steps to walk in all the promises we just read. And actually, I believe it's in the Amplified Bible, if you have an older one. It says, all the promises listed in the Psalms are contingent of us just doing the first two or three verses. And so what does it say? First of all, it talks about being under the shadow of Almighty. In times of perplexity, in distress, what should our response be? We draw closer to God. Yeah. Not run away, not hide. Ah, oh God. No, you draw nigh to God. And really, every child's gone when, when, when it hits the fan, we ought, we ought to be drawn closer to God, not running away from Him. If you run away from the devil has you. The devil purposely, well, I got to figure my life out. I'm going to, you know, no, no, draw close to God. Get, the closer you are to him, the more peace, the more joy, the more blessing. Amen. Don't, don't let anything you've done or the devil commit you to run away from God. So when there's perplexity and distress, get to that safe place. You know, during, during you know, tornadoes, we don't get them here. 
But I, I was in airports, and you know, I lived in Oklahoma. In many of these hospitals and classrooms, they, they have this uh, tornado sign. This is in case of tornado. It, it's called the shelter. That means when, when the storms are there, boo! You just go right to the shelter. You run to the shelter, and what? You're safe from the storm. God says, come to me. You'll be safe from the storm. You'll be safe from the virus. Hallelujah. So, draw nigh to God. Number two, verse two, I will say of the Lord. The second thing is to use the power of confession. Declare these promises over you and your loved ones. Just drawing nigh to God without a confession will not keep you safe. Because, I don't know, maybe you maybe you heard it once in your lifetime, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. For those of you visiting, I teach on it. I've just done three months teaching on that. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in sea, shall not doubt in heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he says. So you draw nigh to God, and during times of perplexity, distress, you ought to be saying more. Yeah, yeah, the virus is all over, and there's more outbreaks, and man, the things in Walmart. No, 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 don't be saying that. Re remember what I told you. You, you want that mountain removed. You, you don't want to be adding to that mountain. You don't want that disease to say, you're welcome here in my life by confessing it. No, you, you want to remove that mountain to say, bless God. I say, Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God, I trust in him. He delivers me from all diseases. He keeps me. I, he, I have his hand. No evil befalls me. No plague comes nigh my dwelling. His angels keep me and protect me. So we draw close to him. And again, we actually put into practice what I've been teaching you for 30 years now. Say of the Lord. What are you saying? Well, I just hope we have some toilet paper tomorrow because I don't... No! <laughs> Philippians 4.19 My God shall supply all your needs except for toilet paper. This is what we've been teaching you for 30 years. You say, I have a supply. If God needs to, he'll get a pigeon to carry, carry a, a roll of toilet paper to you. There's precedence in the Bible. Lord, you're my refuge, you're my supply. You spawn, I need toilet paper. And need to every day, some raven, some hawk, who knows, a fox, a coyote can bring a roll of toilet paper, leave it at your front door. Well, I don't believe that. It'll never happen for you. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. The whole earth. Looking. Looking to show himself strong. Whose hearts are perfect towards him. That means people of faith saying, bless God, I believe God no matter what's happening. I rejoice and I'm glad I have a supply. God says, man, my power can come. But if you're there, oh my God, look at Walmart. What are we going to do? That which you greatly fear shall come upon you. So we must say of the Lord. Say the promises of God. So we need to draw close to him. We need to confess and trust him. Trust him. How do you trust him? By choosing to look at his promises. And not to everything going around us. You know, faith is simply a choice of what you look at. You know, um, it goes on. Let, let's, it says this, he'll deliver you from the snare of fall of moist and pestilence under his wings. You know, this whole psalm, and again, I feel sorry for anybody who was never a farmer or never exposed to a farm. Because you're half ignorant of the Bible. No one shouted about that. Because Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. I know exactly. I was a grape farmer. 
my sheep. Jesus is talking about, about farming. And, and, and here he, he's, he's talking about a mother hen. God is referring to himself as a mother hen. And we, we had chickens. We had ducks. Yeah, I lost you. I'm sorry. I think all of you ought to, ought to just have a little ground, pull out of ground, start farming, learn more about the Bible. And see, a storm is coming. Oh, a storm. And you know what those baby chicks do? They run to mama. In their nests. And they run underneath her, and mama fluffs up her feathers and covers her with her wings. No more storms, just the warmth, security of mama. And the fellowship of one another. They become oblivious to the storm outside because they're under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. That's us. Woo! God says, come to me. Get under my shadow. Now, it's very important. Little chicks don't have cell phones and keeping up on multimedia all the time and CNN and all the news, what's going on. You know, a little chick once in a while can sneak under and look at the storm, what's going on, then just puts their head back in. It's all right to get information on time, but don't be focused on it. Be focused on him, his security. During these times, it ought to be the best times of your life. Your fellowship, your faith, trusting in him, believing him. It is to be the best times. I'm fixing to close. I love the good news translation. Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, you can say to him, You are my defender, you are my protector. You are my God, and I trust you. And then he says, it says this, He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers. You know, baby chicks don't need to contend with the storm, don't need to contend with the, the, the fox trying to get into the, the, the hen house. Mama will take care of that. Mama will lay down her life to protect her hens. Now, mama may, may have its limitations of certain animals, but God has no limitations. God will, 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 will get his... You ever, you ever... You know what a hair lick is? You know what a hair lick? Yeah. Not a cat. When a cat gets ready to attack or scare... That hair lick. <laughs> ready to attack. I tell you. Anything comes near you, and you're close to him, under his shadow, and Lord, I trust you. God, if God has a hair lick. <laughs> yeah. See, the, see, they understood this. Yeah. Talking about a, a mother fowl protecting, providing, yeah. keeping all of her chicks safe. Yeah. They're, they're almost oblivious to what's outside going on. Because they're just, they're just close to mama. And God says, be close to me. Amen. Trust me, just like a, a, a chick would trust its mother. Yes. He'll cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thy trust. Well, what, what, I might, this might have trust in his wings. See, too much information can hinder you. Information's good, but our focus ought to be on the word. Verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of flyeth by day. Why, you're under the shadow. Now notice verse 6, for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor destruction that wastes at noonday. No, no matter if it's demons, whether it's a virus, no matter what, God will take care of us. New Living Translation says this, for he shall rescue you from every trap and protect you from every disease. So you ought to be saying that. He protects me from every disease. He protects me 
for coronavirus. He protects me from the flu. I live long, healthy, strong, not sick and day in life because I say so. I trust in God. Yeah. He'll cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you in his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. You got to go somewhere. You put on the word and that protects you. Well, I don't know about that. Well, stay home. I, I don't know what to help you. The Bible is truth. Do not be afraid of the terrors by night or the arrow flies by day. Do not dread that the, the diseases that stalk in darkness. Do not dread them. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Father. Father takes care of me. And it goes on, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only thy eyes shall behold and see the reward of the wicked. See, every so often we're under the shadow, under the wings of God, and we, we peek out and see, man, that's how many people die. That's, that's what's going on in the world. We, we, we see it with our eyes, but man, it doesn't come nigh me. I'm under I'm under the shadow of mighty man. It's so safe, so secure, so provided in here. Draw nigh to God. Confess the word. Trust in him. And God says, because you have made my, the Lord, which is my refuge, even most high thy habitation, no evil shall befall you. Neither any plague come near your dwelling. How, do, how, how can I make sure? You draw close to him. You confess it. And say, I trust you. I trust you to keep me. I say no evil. You ought to be saying that every day of your life. No evil befalls me. No plague comes nigh my dwelling. Remember Israel. When the death angel was coming. That was a plague. Death. Come to every household spreading and what were the children of Israel to do? Get the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and on the lintel. And when that death angel, that, that pestilence of death came, saw the blood, they couldn't touch it. See, when you confess and trust in God under your shadow, says, no evil befalls me, no plague comes down my dwelling, you've just marked your household. The Bible's true or it's not. Well, I know in some way it didn't work for. The word works if you work it. And if that isn't good enough, God decides to send his own personal security team to your house. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you, to protect you. That's what that word means. In all your ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So not only are you under shed almighty, God put security teams around your house. Keeping you from disease and disaster. Well, this stuff keeps happening to me, I just don't know why. Check up on what you're, if you're drawing nigh to God and what are you saying. If you'll draw nigh to God, trust Him and confess boldly, man, Angels are released. Protection is granted. Yes. No evil befalls me. You ought to just say, no evil befalls me. No plague comes on and gone. Angels, wherever I go, they keep me. They protect me. My steps are ordered of the Lord. Yes. And let, let's just read the rest in the New Living Translation. It says this, you'll trample on lions and cobras. You'll crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Jesus said, remember this in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in my means hurt you. Say that, nothing hurts me. I tread on disease. I tread on sickness. It doesn't come near my house. Brothers and sisters, I've been teaching you this for 30 years now. We're finally going to have to do something about it, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. We built our house on the rock, not on the sand. I dominate during this time. 
I am a victor, not a victim. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I'll protect though, I'll protect those who love my name. When they call upon me, I'll answer them. I'll be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. So, what do we do, brothers and sisters? When we see distress, perplexity, we luck up. Our heads are not down. We fear not. We're not dismayed, worried, anxious, agitated, upset, concerned. We, we draw nigh to God. We confess the promises of Psalm 91. We trust Him. And we pass over to the other side. Let us pray. Father, we're just so honored to lie to fellowship around your word, to be encouraged. Father, that you, you'll take care of us. This has not caught you by surprise. Therefore, it doesn't catch us by surprise. We put our faith and our trust in you. And Father, we'll endeavor to follow government protocols, whatever, but our faith is not in that. Our faith is in you. And Father, I thank you. And right now, in Jesus' name, we invoke this blessing of Psalm 91 upon every person here, upon their families, upon their world, their associations in Jesus' name. We invoke Psalm 91 in this region, Chautauqua County, this northeast region. We, we invoke Psalm 91 over America. Father, we still trust in you. We're here. And we break the power of this virus. We break the, the fear and the pandemonium. We break the power of Satan over the social media, over our nation in Jesus' name. And Father, we, we say it dies, it dissipates as fast as it came, as fast as it goes. In Jesus' name. And Father, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Father, thank you for protecting us. Thank you for encouraging us in this time with heads bowed and eyes closed. We talked about our response that as child, children of God, we can run to God. We, 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 can, we can be having the time of our lives. We can be informed but not focus on everything that's going on. Our focus is on God, His Word, His faithfulness, His promises. And th this is a delight for every child of God to put their trust in God. But maybe you're here and, and, and you're not a child of God. You're, you're, you know, maybe you're what America calls a Christian, but not what the Bible calls a Christian. America says, well, you're a good person. You believe in Jesus. You go to church. You're a Christian. No, Jesus said you have to be born again. See, God only has children. And so being born again is when you accept Jesus, that his nature comes on the inside. And, and he takes that old sinful nature out of you. And it's a literal spiritual experience about being born again. Jesus said, without being born again, you'll not see the kingdom of God. See, as a child of God, we, we have the love, we have the faith on the inside of us. Because Jesus puts it in there. And we can be secured during these uh, perplexing times. And so if you're here and you're, you're, you've never been born again, or you're not sure you're born again, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to, to be born again. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one is looking around and, and we're not going to embarrass you. This is between you and God. This is good for those of you that are watching over the world live stream. If you don't know Jesus or you're out of fellowship with him and your heart knows it and during this time you need to draw nigh to him. It's not time to be backslidden. It's time to come home and, and get into the fold. Be under the shadow and safety of God. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, is there anybody here who says, I, I need to accept Jesus or I need to come back to Jesus? Would you raise your hand? Anybody here? Is anybody? And again, we're not going to embarrass you. Once you, I see your hand, you can put it down. For those of you that are on live stream, I can't see your hand. Go ahead, put it up. God will see you. That's the most important thing. It may be secret to us, but it's not a secret to him. Anybody here? And I, I know on a day like this, uh, you love the Lord be, become church. But if, if you're here or you're watching the live stream, I know it may be dark. We're not diminishing. There is a real virus out there. It can be scary. And the Bible tells it is scary. The Bible talks about without God in your life, there's, there's no hope. You're, you're, you're subject. You're not protected as you should. 
So I, I give you a personal invitation to accept Jesus. He is a shelter in the storm. He is a healer. He is a provider. And, and no matter what's going on, he can take care of you. So right now, wherever you're at, call on him. How do you call? If you pick up a phone, you call a friend, you, just, you begin to talk to them. Call on God right now. Just say, Father, in Jesus' name, I believe Jesus came. He died for me. He rose again from the dead. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And right now, Jesus, be my Lord. Be my protector. Be my safety during this time until the day I go home to be with you. In Jesus' name. Uh, just a very simple prayer. It doesn't need to be word by word. But just calling him in simplicity will change your life. And if you've done that, go ahead and contact us. Let us know. We want to help you get started. We want to rejoice with you. Amen. Well, were you helped? Were you encouraged? We, we, we look up, not down. We look to him, not around. We, we're informed, but we're not focused on the storm. We're focused on him. And so I want to encourage you to stay posted. We're planning to still be Tuesday night next Sunday, unless law changes, unless, you know, we'll just, we'll just stay tuned with slick text, web pages, and, and if any, any questions, call the church. And we get through this, and we just confess as quick as that virus came, it boomerangs quick as it goes. See, if you'll say that, it will happen. And so let's just say it. Let's just join up with all of our brothers and sisters around this. Shall not come nigh us, and you get out of our dwelling. We dwell in America. You get out of our dwelling. In Jesus' name, we love you. Don't forget, no fellowship, and we're, we're, we're doing our best to practice social distancing, so do f space fist bumps and, you know, whatever, wave. You know, the peace sign if you were in the hippie movement. Or, no, no, the peace is this way. This is if you're a Star Trek fan. <laughs> you know, Spock was on to something. Live long and prosper. Yeah. So that's a good thing, too. Yeah. We love you. 